How's it everyone? This video expedition will break down the interplanetary spacecraft and stations used in the colonization and settlement expansion on the Martian surface and in low orbit. For All Mankind Season 3 ends in 1996 following the first two year expedition to the Red Planet. This was covered in the previous episode titled Mars Spacecraft. This will be linked down below in the description and at the end of this video. Season 4 begins with the alternate reality date of 2003 after a 7 year timeline jump continuing on an additional 2 years into 2005 season finale of episode 10 titled Perestroika. The International Mars Program consists that of NASA, Roscosmos, Helios Aerospace and the People's Republic of Korea. By mid-1997, the Mars Treaty Alliance added Japan, India, the Communist Coalition of Countries, and European Union, forming the M7 nations with their combined space programs. Happy Valley Base, located in the Valles Marineris Canyon, was home to nine personnel, with a support crew of 11 on board Phoenix Station that was in low orbit. Three OV-200 series ion transports, two Sojourner heavy shuttles, and five N-1 cargo rockets launched regular logistic missions in intervals of every three months. This delivered supply payloads, cargo, and crew rotations between the Earth-Mars transit orbits. The first M7 summit unveiled its 10-year plan for expanding Jamestown base into a colonial settlement and the Tier 1 expansion of Phoenix Station. The entire future of the Mars space program revolved around harvesting rare minerals and resources from asteroids. This would be achieved by the most powerful space platform ever constructed named the Ranger 1. It was a specialized type of heavy spacecraft engineered to capture asteroids and tow them into a planet's orbit for later mining. Eight fusion reactors, a variation to the deuterium energy power plants, supply the thrust for these 16 mass ion thrusters. All seven Mars Treaty nations contributed substantial resources to build and commission this cutting-edge asteroid snatcher. Helios Aerospace was contracted to design the fusion system propulsion platforms. The ion drive engines were already in the production phase for the Calypso Mars transport ship, greatly accelerating the research and design process with the infrastructure already in place for assembly and production. By 1998, the multinational effort only two years into construction had completed the spacecraft's primary hull section with four central reactors and 12 powerful ion dry thrusters ready for the single stage to orbit launch to the assembly stations. Integrated with the International Spaceport and scheduled to receive the outer four reactors delivered into low Earth orbit inside the large Sea Dragon's payload stage. Shortly after Ranger 1's successful launch, the primary ship section with four inner reactors performed trial run maneuvers and a test mission beyond Earth's orbit. Four years prior, the Soviet Mars 94 exploration vessel was abandoned due to a reactor malfunction in between the Trans-Mars injection route. The Russian crew maneuvered their vessel into a stable orbit before jumping onto the Sojourner 1 rescue ship. Equipped with a control capture arm, the mass cargo hauler rendezvoused and attached to Mars 94, transporting the ship back to low Earth orbit for a complete dock propulsion replacement system. The repaired and refitted Soviet ship returned to service a year later, performing cargo transport runs to the Martian colony, reintroducing a valuable asset to the increasingly stretched supply chains. By the year 2000, Ranger 1 was ready for full-scale missions with the four outer reactors installed in low Earth orbit as the capture arm was made ready for a Mars transit mission. Eight heavy fusion reactors powered 24 plasma ion thrusters capable of towing asteroids 2 to 400 meters in diameter. 
On a joint venture with the M7 nations, the Calypso Mars Transport System was a key component in the Red Planet's resource expansion program. 150 meters in length, these heavy cargo transit spacecraft were capable of carrying a 1,500-ton payload with 20 to 30 personnel over the 250 million mile apogee orbit in just under six weeks' time. When Mars and Earth are in their closest perigee orbit, the MTS could complete the journey in just under three weeks. The Calypso's heavy fusion reactor powers four ion plasma engines, the same propulsion drive system utilized by Ranger 1. In 1999, the second MTS ship Unity was commissioned into active service, allowing the M7 space programs to rapidly expand the Happy Valley Research Outpost into a sustained settlement colony with hundreds of international personnel rotating through two-year Martian service contracts. By the year 2000, the addition of these two heavy transports allowed the three fusion-powered OV shuttles to be assigned back to Earth, performing lunar support missions for the immense Helium-3 and Deuterium harvesting program networks. As this new 21st century moon rock industry now is directly responsible for nearly 50% of the overall global power and energy grids. One OV-200 MTS shuttle remained on standby status in a fleet of five space planes for rapid response or emergency deployment to the Red Planet. The M7 transit support fleet now comprises that of two Sojourner heavy shuttles, the Soviet Mars 98 refit single stage orbit vessel, five N1 Soyuz nuclear cargo rockets, along with the MTS Calypso and Unity that are now responsible for the majority of Martian transport and payload capacity. Additionally, six Mars Surface Ascent Module MSAM hoppers or large cargo skiffs perform transport duties from Phoenix Station to Happy Valley Settlement. These hoppers also perform research and planetary expeditions across the Martian surface. In 2001, the Ranger 1 mass hauler utilized the cargo control arm apparatus for the Tier 1 Phoenix Station expansion. The additional habitat ring was constructed in low Earth orbit while docked to the International Spaceport. Ranger 1 secured and attached the spin section to its large grapple cable network along with connecting the aft docking pylon to replace the station's heavy methane thrusters that were no longer in service. At the end of 2002, the Phoenix Station expansion was complete along with the Happy Valley Colony containing eight surface landing rings and a fully functional helium-3 refinery extracting the isotopes from the Martian soil. Now Mars could sustain its own deuterium fuel production for the fleet of ion spacecraft in orbit and performing logistics to and from Earth. In 2003, the Earth Luna M7 nations fielded a fleet of 16 STS and VKK shuttles, 5 200 series orbital vehicles, 21 N1 Soyuz cargo rockets, 4 Sea Dragon heavy lift to orbit vehicles, and 5 Polaris space planes. These shuttles were lifted into orbit by modified carrier aircraft, launching them from the stratosphere in the same manner as the larger Pathfinders. Additionally, Earth orbit contained three construction platforms and relay stations along with five shuttle orbit fuel depots for the conventional propulsion translunar injection burns. Moon Lab and Lunar Gateway was a combined station and an additional refueling dock for missions on the way to Mars. With the discovery of 2003 LC, the $20 trillion Iridium asteroid, the M7 nations embarked on the most ambitious capture mission to date. The massive object was 1,100 meters in diameter, over three times the size of the KF Kronos attempt earlier that year. 
To accommodate the extra payload, the Ranger spacecraft received a retrofit thruster upgrade, replacing 24 drives with 16 larger plasma engines that operate 3.7 times the total payload capacity of the old system. To tow and shift Goldilocks orbit to Earth that is now on approach to Mars. A year later, Ranger 2 had completed the propulsion refit and successfully rendezvous and slows the large asteroid's trajectory. However, a rogue Martian faction took control of Ranger's guidance systems, causing 2003 LC to be captured by the Red Planet's gravity in a sustained high orbital rotation instead of continuing on towards Earth. The end of Season 4 progresses to another time jump of 7 years ahead to 2012. The Goldilocks asteroid is home to an iridium mining facility named Kuznetsov Station in honor of a fallen Soviet cosmonaut. For future science fiction expeditions, hit subscribe and check out the channel's playlist and video sections for over a hundred episodes covering The Expanse, Star Trek, Star Wars, and more. Thanks so much for watching and have a great soul. This video was made and produced by a human. No AI algorithms were used.